Oh, hello, Dennis. I didn't see you there. Oh, hi, Bearmouse. I didn't think you'd recognize me. Dennis, I know exactly who you are. You're the old age conservative geezer with the likes of Dinesh D'Souza and Ann Coulter who used to be really unpopular on the net. But then suddenly conservatism became the new punk and you can make a hitload of popularity off of this new trend. Am I right? Hey, I'm just using my wealth and influence to spout my opinions to a wide-ranging new audience and I'll Well, too bad, Dennis, because as we all know, every counterculture is met by another counter-counterculture. Prepare to be dominated. So if you're not aware, well, no, fuck it. You are aware. There's this channel called Prager University. It is basically the hotspot of conservative opinion online. I remember this channel right back when it was tiny, specifically from this guy. God damn, those were the days. I mean, I'm apprehensious. I did an entire video on another channel before and it really didn't go down too well. But then again, yeah. But now there's over 200 videos on this channel. I can't just debunk every single one, can I? Or be bothered to watch each video, can I? But then again, yeah. So I sifted through and watched every single, no, I watched about 80 because after a while, you know. And something I've noticed is there's hardly any responses as of late. And of the ones that are, well, they're almost always pointed specifically towards religion and climate change. There's nothing wrong about that, it's just they're two of the easiest and least controversial topics ever. I mean, all you really need for that is a pothole of 54 and maybe a bunch of old breed internet skeptics pre-elevator gate. Which may explain to me why they've concentrated on these more unconventional and trickier to contemplate topics in more recent times, and then just sneak in all the strongly hated stuff every blue moon. So then people in the comments section can go, Rah, rah, fuck the haters, this channel is about different points of view. They're attacking the regressives. They've got a right to an opinion. So let's get straight to work. And who knows, maybe Dennis will comment on my channel and send me some gifts, just like Elaine de Botton did last time with these scented candles. Although they really don't look much like, you know, what he said they'd be. Why, Elaine, why? In 1965, President Lyndon Johnson famously declared a war on poverty. Half a century later, the poverty rate, the percentage of people the government declares to be living in poverty, has barely changed. Goodness me, it's almost as if the entire system doesn't want them to get out of poverty. Given then that work is the road out of poverty, shouldn't we be doing everything we can to encourage people to get on that road? Mike, it's just not that simple. In my country, there are 1.6 million people unemployed and less than half that is available in jobs. There just aren't enough jobs anymore. And of the ones that are, the ones that are being created, they're pretty shit. They're bullshit. They don't need to be there. Why are we just making more jobs? That means that in many states, welfare recipients would have to earn even more by working than they receive in benefits for not working in order to come out even. You know, people pushing this scrounger narrative is really gack. I mean, welfare benefits, they're not fun. It's not fun walking around 35 hours a week trying to find non-existent jobs, especially if you're 50 years old and have arthritis. I'm serious, this happens. If we are serious about reducing welfare dependency and helping Americans climb out of poverty, we need to establish a clear policy preference for work over welfare. You know a guy you should look up? Buckminster Fuller. He said it right. You either go out to make money or you go out to make sense. There's more than enough machinery and progress in the world to provide everybody with everything they need. Not alone to sit in stupid cubicles and stupid jobs. Automation is coming whether you like it or not. What's the major difference between liberals and conservatives? I like to use this video's title to answer a bit more of a rounded question on this sort of thing. It's hard to define who is more compassionate because we use different words to define what that means. So for example, if you think that being compassionate is to give lots of money away to charity, then I would say yes, conservatives are by and large more compassionate. But it's far easier to be sympathetic with suffering than it is to be sympathetic with thought. In other words, if I give money to the poor, then I'm a saint. But if I ask why are they poor in the first place, then I'm a communist. What is the most essential ingredient in wealth creation and economic growth? Oh, stop, go no further. We can find an easy answer to this. Ready, fellow regulars? Okay. Labor. Labor. Knowledge. Oh, I guess my entire point of view is a lie. It's easy to prove. 
What is the difference between us Hello. and a caveman? The only difference is that we de facto force others into servitude for us by depriving them of their basic needs and thereby gain higher amounts of wealth from their labor. <gasps> now, of course, these products didn't come from nowhere. Hang on a minute. Are we getting somewhere that might be remotely in the right direction? They came from the synthesis of accumulated knowledge, which led to these innovations, these surprises. Oh, okay. Wait, what is this? Is this some kind of like new speak or something? Prager speak? But what if he's right? <laughs> ah, fuck it. I suppose labor really is necessary towards producing wealth. And ha ha, before everyone goes down in the comments section saying, huh huh, he can't produce wealth because he's a communist. <laughs> <clears throat> All right then, fine. You are a beautiful person, and I know it might be hard now, but together we can make a world that fits for everybody. There you happy? Yeah. Thanks. That's David Foster Wallace, by the way. You should look him up. Women in the United States and in Western Europe are the freest and most liberated in human history. Ah, it's S.E. Cup. I mean, Christina Hoff Summers. Oh, come on. They're both basically the same. 23 cent gender pay gap is simply the difference between the average earnings of all men and women working full time. In regards to the gender wage gap, I think of it as a little bit more than just this small snippet that we all love to debate about online. Rather, I think about it as that why is it that jobs that have historically been placed upon women are worth less than jobs that have historically been placed upon men? Why is it that uh, child rearing and education are worth far less than something like uh, someone in business? I mean, I think I can pretty much tell which one's more important, but no, apparently we decided to put it upon business. And if the answer to the question as to why do men get more promotions and more pay rises that men are more assertive and they're better in the capitalist sphere and they go and ask for it more and stuff like that. Okay, well then why is it that we always complain when men don't get as much alimony or childcare or whatever you want to call it during a divorce when women go and ask for it and are more assertive than that? But to add to this, why is it even expected upon society for women to leave their job, go home and look after their child when they have a kid, thereby performing hours upon hours of socially necessary labour time? Good grief, did I really say that? <laughs> but is it really social conditioning that explains women's vocational preferences and their special attachment to children? Perhaps in the pursuit of happiness, men and women take somewhat different paths. I don't know, Chris. Maybe in the pursuit of happiness, I like to hide in the bathtub. Doesn't mean that I'm not being overwatched by my evil cistern overlords. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm here completely by my own free will. There are no coercive effects forcing me into this situation whatsoever. I am a strong and independent human person. And And isn't it more than a little patronizing to suggest that most American women are not free? They're not self-determining human beings? Yeah, that sounds awfully McCarthyist. Hey you, don't you love this country? Don't you think you should be proud to live in it? Don't you think it's a bit insulting to just criticize one faculty of it when we're far better than any other country in the world? In any conceivable way? Come on, base mom, you're a lefty. Uh, liberal. Uh, classical liberal. Um... Sargonal Sargonite liberal? Yeah, all right, fine. Come on, you know better than this. Why did the United States go to war against Iraq? Hey, it's that guy, Mr. Airstrip One. God, you gotta hand it to PragerU, they got all the players here today. But the reason was clear. Saddam Hussein, the brutal dictator of Iraq for 35 years, was the central threat to peace in the Middle East. More like Saddam the secular leader until you decided to change your mind because of oil and stuff. Had he backed down and accepted repeated United Nations resolutions, especially those requiring him to prove he had destroyed his stockpiles of WMD and had no nuclear weapons development program, there would have been no US action. Oh yeah, that's right. He has to get rid of his stock, but America still gets to keep 40% of the entire world's WMDs. Yeah, I see how that works. The good guys! But does rent control work? Does it lower or raise housing costs? From the late Milton Friedman to Paul Krugman, agree that the answer is no. 93% said that a ceiling on rents 
reduces the quantity and quality of housing available. Well, maybe there's a simple solution to all these problems. I don't know, something like um, getting rid of landlords. But then who would you pay rent to? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a tricky one, that is. Starting in 2015, the Affordable Care Act requires many companies to offer health insurance to employees who work 30 hours or more a week. As you may have guessed, the grocery store Kelly works for is one of these companies. The owners of her grocery store and companies like it would love to supply health insurance for all of their employees. Unfortunately, this isn't an expense that many companies can afford and still stay in business without big price increases to consumers. Well, again, maybe there's a real simple solution to all this. Something like getting rid of private health care. But then who would you buy your health care from? Oh, dear, yeah, got me again. Yeah, uh, worldview destroyed. <laughs> If the cost for employees goes up because the government increases the minimum wage for entry-level jobs, what do you think will happen to employees? The math simply doesn't add up. If the minimum wage is increased by that much, a restaurant owner will either have to increase prices or hire less people to be able to pay fewer of them more. Oh right, well that explains why all those companies left my country in 1998 when the government introduced the national minimum wage, like they said they would. Oh wait, no, they like all stayed. Uh, turns out human nature isn't everything the Chicago school tells us. As you can see by these graphs, the national minimum wage didn't affect jobs in the slightest people are not really thinking of the small business owners. The prices of the, the minimum, wage, minimum wage keeps going up. How much more can we charge the customer to buy our products? If you can't, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. If, you, if your business isn't making enough money for you to pay your staff a decent wage, you're a bad businessman. It's funny because I'm opening a second one at the moment right now. Oh, times must be really tough. Let me get my violin out as you open your second business. Yeah, I mean, you got to have the business people. If you didn't have the business people, then who would you employ yourself to? Huh? Where can you get work from? Hmm? You know, it, it's almost as if I don't like capitalism. Yeah. Sometimes you hear in the news about a US company buying a foreign company and moving its headquarters overseas. Well, this can happen for many reasons. One of them is a tax inversion. Okay, okay, I get it. Taxes, that's all you guys like to talk about. But have you ever thought about the fact that this whole thing you're defending is sort of like a game? A very deadly and dangerous and pernicious game for a lot of people? Hey, government, lower my taxes! No! Okay, then I'll leave and take all my business with me. <gasps> no! The good guys! I'm Ami Horowitz. Democrats and the Democratic Party have moved decisively to the left. No. Ugh. Yeah, of course they're moving further to the left. That's the reason why a social democratic candidate got hounded upon by Hillary and her goons and basically made him unelectable. And that's also the reason why Hillary and the Democratic Party is basically purging Bernie supporters. That I don't think anything's wrong with socialism. I, I kind of like it. I think the American people like socialism. I think socialism's great. Yeah, I wonder if he's going anywhere with this. I mean, he's just like... Oh, 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 fucking hell, no! Oh, no! 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 You fucking... Oh! Oh! Yeah, we're here again, people. I knew this day would come. Sorry, I just love how he uses this clip to describe Venezuela when it's very obviously that viral video from Sao Paulo, which, if you don't know, is in Brazil. And most people in Caracas live in the extremely dangerous barrios of the city. These barrios are massive, crudely built, claustrophobic cities within cities. Yeah, only in socialist countries do people live in slums. Over in capitalist Brazil, people live in... Oh. Well, uh, over in capitalist Chile, poor people live in... Oh. Uh, well, well, over in capitalist Mexico, people live... Oh! Oh, look! Look at this! Goodness me! Biggest slum in the world. Well, I never. Yeah, I wonder if there's a bit more of a nuanced way of seeing this crisis. Well, you see, there's this thing called capital flight. It's basically when people leave the country all of a sudden because they can get a better deal elsewhere. In many ways, it's quite similar to this. Hey, Chavez, make things better for me. No! You're going to do the good things! Okay, then I'll leave and all your country people will starve. <gasps> no! 
The g- oh, forget it. Right now I'm starting to think the word the economy is code word for a hostage situation. So how do we prevent this? Well, we've got a lot of oil reserves, so we'll keep on milking those out for a couple of years and keeping the job crazes at bay. But in a surprise twist, the oil markets crashed in 2014, leaving us with literally nothing to pay them off with. But that isn't the fault of socialism, that's the fault of global capitalism. No! Socialism will always fail! It's written right into the texts! See? This is the only book you need to learn about socialism on! It's called the Communist Manifesto! It was written in 1848! See? It says right here that socialism will always fail, not because of money-hungry CEOs, or sabotage, or opposition, or anything like that, but simply by the fact of giving workers the right to own their own workplaces! It's always true! It's true! It's true! Whoa! Whoa, what a nightmare. God, I think I'd never invest that much time in Prager Ye- Oh. Hello. Hey, Garrett, it's Mouse. Oh, hey Mouse, what's up? Yeah, look, I've just watched about 80 videos of Prager University. I, I, I just can't do it anymore. It sounds like, I mean for a while at least, you might want to consider doing a little less tearing down of the right, and a little more lifting up of the left. You know, get out and help unionize a workplace, or help uh, build housing for a charitable trust. You could help set up a co-op of self-managed workers, or join a squatter support network. You could tell the people to rise up, tell them to take a stand against hierarchy and domination, tell them to take back their communities and tear down the entire global capitalist nation-state system itself! CBA. Or you could take a break for a while, I don't know. I can't quit. The left needs me. You're goddamn right it does. Now go get him, comrade. Thanks, Garrett. You'll always have a place in my commune. These European countries are now increasingly in the US. <sighs> It is becoming common for young people to live with their parents well into their 30s. Can't anyone see what... They're fucking conservative capitalist Christian apologetic bandwagon opportunists who peddle half-truths and display them as objective facts. God. The discourse of discourse has really slid quite far in the past five years. Fuck it. One more. Income inequality is actually a good thing when it's the product of a free market economy. Oh, good save. We're all different. We have different talents, different temperaments, different ambitions. That's okay because, again, in a free society, we can seek out opportunities that play to our personal strengths. The issue is not whether or not someone decides to be an artist or a banker. The issue is whether or not the banker gets to decide how the artist's life will live. I mean, it's not taxonomic equality, it's social equality. But what about the growing gap between the rich, the 1%, and the rest of us, the 99% that one hears so much about. Isn't that a bad thing? Again, the answer is no. <laughs> You're going to hell. <laughs> In a free market economy, people become wealthy, making what the rich enjoy today into something almost everybody can enjoy tomorrow. Remember what an out of reach luxury flat screen TVs once were? Today, your living room is essentially your own private cinema. So just to let you all know, employment is going down, jobs are being stretched, bullshit ones are being made to fill in the void. Your clothes are made by exploited labourers in a country that you're not told to care about. We've got a disillusioned youth. House prices are skyrocketing. We've got more people as homes than we have homeless people. And we could solve all of the world hunger issues with just one twentieth of the American military budget. <laughs> but that's all okay because you can buy fidget spinners and smartphones on the cheap! Don't worry about all the other problems in the world, just buy these things! Go on, buy them! And make people richer so that they can then sell you more things and you can have more fun and they can get richer and all oh, this fun! It's so fun! <laughs> Don't worry about all the people whose names you're not allowed to know and whose dealings you're not allowed to get involved with. Why would you want to when you can have bait beans and six frankfurters? All brought to you by the amazing effects of trickle-down technomics. Here at PragerU, we value the few at the expense of the many, because we know that deep down in your hearts you've been raised into a Prussian military school-style education system that teaches you to obey the status quo. And any time you come along to criticise us, then we'll just throw you down a USSR and a George Orwell card, and you'll get straight back in line! Because whilst we may not be the most ideal male body, we're just contrarian enough to toggle on that disillusioned inner child inside every millennial. 
and we're gonna milk that to eternity because we know that we're wrong and we don't want to admit it. I am Prager University and you may not like us now, but my God, you're gonna love us. This is what peak capitalism looks like. My God, it is. <clears throat> okay, right, right, um, come here, come here. Cooperatives are far more productive and efficient than businesses, yet they can't compete with them very well. I'll let you think on that for a second. And stay classless. Hello everybody, thank you for all my patrons who have been supporting me over the past month, and I'd like to say a special thank you to ABC Shake, Alejandro Herrera, please send me a photo. BK Lawton, Brandon Torres, Donity, Dylan Duran, Furiosa, jo George Sora, oh, 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 Ira Louie, Isadora, Joe Maridif, Joe Benavides, John Mundane, Josh Carter, Julius Byborg Olsen, Colbin Manny, Mark Mason, Nicholas Hahn, Roy, Sarika Vulcan, The Kinesthetician, Thomas Mitchell, Ung Spiller, William Callahan, WXNZXN, because I'm not saying that in a word, <laughs> and Zal Empty. Thank you all so much for supporting me, it's been really great. And I'd also like to say, get organized or die trying. What is a dude to dine today, a minute or two to two? A thing distinctly hard to say, but harder still to do. Wubba da dub dub! Derishishishishishishi! For our demands most moderate are, we only want the earth. Spooks! Spooks! None of you are free from spooks! I've signed a few sneakers in my day. Make no mistake, when the revolution comes, we're gonna collectivize your toothbrushes. And of course, a shout out to the IWW. It's my union, been part of it for a year, it starts from a pound a month, it's a brilliant place to go. And if you haven't, then fuck off. Nah, I'm just kidding. Alright, enjoy your day guys, bye bye!